uh, what I'm actually sharing with you uh, is, uh, and even that completely changed my understanding of children. Uh, I, I used to live in a small village uh, of non-literate artisans in Nilambur with porters, porter community, and I was doing some experiments with them. Uh, experiments in no teaching. I, I will share that also with you. Uh, so during the two months holidays, I started doing some, you know, work with children. Uh, and that was a time when I was very clear that uh, senses are our tools to understand the world, uh, something that we don't use at all in our whole schooling system. So, uh, so that's why I purposely called it sensing nature, knowing nature. And, uh, and I, I still had the hangover of NID, so I was trying to do some exercises that we were doing at NID, you know, when we, I studied at uh, the design school, you know. Uh, uh, so I got them to do a similar exercise that you did. So that is what I wanted to share with you, you know. So this was, uh, uh, basically senses are about doors to the outer world, but it is also the door to the inner world. Uh, modern education doesn't address the inner world at all. That's the basic, basic fundamental problem. This is denied completely. It is only about the outside that we are engaging with. Uh, but what happens is that, meanwhile, this gets destroyed. That is what we don't understand. It's not a neutral situation. You know, if you don't, if this doesn't make up, then we are dead. You know, we are walking dead actually. You know, the literates are walking dead. Uh, so children actually in the process of engaging with the world, awaken their inner world. So inner world is far more important than the outer world. Outer world is a means for our awakening and realizing our potential. No? Uh, so it's actually absurd to sensitize senses. Because that is what we are born with. No? But schooling systematically kills it. That is why we need to go back to this and you know consciously start looking. You know? Uh, because this doesn't work. I mean, you you may think I'm you know talking nonsense, but the eyes, but you know you all answered blue color. No, it simply shows that you have not been seeing. No, we are conditioned to believe in a certain set of knowledge. No, uh, the same question was asked to children in the school. You know, seven seventh standard or something like that. So the children are asking, but what time of the day are you talking about? We don't have those questions. No. <laughs> We are of the past, children are of the present. So there is going to be a mismatch in modern educated people trying to understand children because you two belong to two different worlds. And what we are doing is continuously taking them away from that world and putting them into our mediocre world. We are mediocre, I hope you understand this, absolute mediocres. <laughs> because authenticity is not nothing that we can deal with because we have never used our being for, you know, Engagement with the world. We are second-hand people, you know. It's, it's, it's better that we understand this fast. Don't make any illusions about it. Then at least we can start working on it, you know. Otherwise, we have this notion that we are all great guys, you know. <laughs> it's a tragedy, uh, you know. I always wonder that if you, you know, you ask the tree, whom do they want? Do they want the educated or the uneducated? What would they prefer? It's obvious, no? We are looking for nature, no? That's a strange idea that we have. <laughs> we are nature. We don't have to look for nature. But we have killed it. That's the whole problem of problem that, uh, you know, has happened. So, so, because this workshop was kind of a detoxification kind of thing, you know, uh, six, seven, eight months of school. So you have two months of, uh, you know, just observing and working on your senses. So we began, you know, we sit around, sit in silence. Uh, 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 listen, actually, you know, the, this is something that I did in 2000. I, I don't think I will repeat any of this thing again. So don't take notes. All right? Don't take notes. Children need not be done anything. We, we, these days there is this mindfulness program for children. Absolute nonsense. Because children are mindful. It is the adult who is unmindful. You know? 
so the tragedy is that we want to impose our authority on children all the time this is the problem you know <laughs> they are mindful so this i'm sorry i did this workshop I, I, i shouldn't have done it because they are mindful you know uh, but of course i didn't use the terms like that no mindfulness and all that he was sitting silently and listening to what was happening around you know the birds small sounds that are happening you know uh and tradition traditional games if you look at any of the activities that children do it is basically to awaken their processes inside there is no football happening there there is no planned games everything children do you go to any traditional society whatever games children play spontaneously has to do with awakening some of their qualities to understand the world so there is this game that you know children uh, somebody will throw something and children has to then go and find out there is a natural you know a game that every children play you know earlier days and this is to do with your sensing your observation you know everything that children do is to awaken their senses and abilities to understand the world you know uh, so this is something that now i wouldn't do these things that's why i don't take notes this is something that i did because i didn't realize the true ability of children you know so this is what we did you know what we just did and uh, luckily what happened was that i didn't have money so i could only buy the poster color with six colors i didn't have if i had the money i would have bought them 12 colors you know but thank god i didn't have so i bought only six colors and to my surprise i found that every child was able to mix and match and get the exact color that's why i told this is not an artistic activity it's a scientific activity learn how to do it understand now this is the kind of color that children you know so i got them to observe just get the brown colors shades of brown put them and then you know uh you know mixed and matched and got all the colors so this was actually very surprising for me that uh, children are just able to do it so i did a uh, while i was doing a workshop in uh, the school hyderabad in a school i gave the same exercise to all the teachers but i also got the ayas and drivers to this place i wanted to see how they would do it and i mean it's quite obvious that none of the teachers are able to do it but all the ayas and drivers because they did not go through this idea of schooling they were able to do it you know because the first response of an educated first is fear you know or we use reasoning we think this color with that color this color you know so we have a very structured logical way of trying to find this out and children seems to have a method which is not reasoning they are able to just do it you know because uh, we again from the uh, from the modern modernistic perspective we have we have this idea that uh, uh, that uh, what is it knowledge is a matter of trial and error you heard that no trial and error that's not true at all it's because at, uh, uh, none of the biological beings do trial and error a bird doesn't do trial and error to enter its nest do they there is no trial and error because as biological beings that is what we are meant to do you know what happens is that for a child is a strengthening of the muscle that that is taking time not its ability to walk don't mix that with trial and error understand there's no trial and error in in biological systems clear hmm? because that is the nature of life there's no trial and error but there is something that again which is opposing to the modern notion because we keep talking about don't reinvent the wheel you heard that life is always about reinventing the wheel there is nothing new this is a absurd idea but newness comes in renewal it is new because you are doing it that is the newness you know and that is authenticity understand na no? whole modern knowledge is about copying so there is nothing new in that so they have to create an idea called creativity to create something new doesn't exist 
so this is the kind of space that uh, uh, I will just take you through this, you know, this. Uh, so like somebody did here, you know. So this we did, but here it was very clearly by observing. It's not from my mind. So they went and picked up leaves that are different, different, different shades. You know, put them together and then repeated it. So that gives a more observational, you you're more, become more sensitive to color. That's what happens. You can see one side is the original, this is the color. And this child got into architecture. He got more, you know, I, only this two months workshops I used to do. And children really got interested in few things, you know. Of course, this was a very, very economically backward, poor society. So many of them couldn't do anything further. Uh, so then also we started doing the regular idea of color scale. Then what we did just now, picked up leaf and started coloring. Actually, once you go through this kind of a activity for few few days and create a habit of seeing, then you will find that everything in nature seems to be beautiful. You know? Otherwise, normally when you talk about beauty, people will go and pluck flower and come. You know? Where well, that has been established, flower beautiful. You know. <laughs> So this is an interesting thing that uh, when children go for this, uh, you know, uh, botanical gardens, you know, till the age of seven, eight, they will see the tree and you know, all that. After that, they only read and come back. They would remember all the names of the plants, you know, but seeing stops after that. Because th this, the two different activities actually, reading. Uh, in fact, I stopped reading completely for a few years and I found that reading doesn't take effort at all. You look at the billboards, when you travel, you don't see the trees, the, you know, all that, but billboards will go into you. You don't have to make an effort at all for the words to go in, you know. But actually to see, you need effort because seeing needs presence. The whole being needs to be present to see. But for reading, it's only the mind that is required. You don't need to put an effort, you know. And this is what happens because all along we are only doing thinking and reasoning. This is all what we are engaging with. We are in the realm of language, you know. So the, the other part stops working. Yeah. <clears throat> With dry leaves.
So this was another uh, uh, revelation that children create beauty. It's not an effort. You know, they don't have to learn how to compose. Composition is in our nature. No? Because composition is fundamentally uh, a biological property. What I mean by that is that when you find something composed, the effort that you need to put is least. That's the reason. You find something beautiful because that enters you much faster than a clutter. You know? So it's actually a cognitive need. Understand? Actually, you know, the, the, the issue is that uh, uh, we will have to do a complete deletion of the notions that we are carrying. You know, like what he said in the morning that uh, the idea of teaching was absent in the rural tribal area, in, in our Indian languages. You know, like yesterday I was mentioning the notion of waste is absent. Something that we don't even un understand. That why is the notion of waste absent in, in, a, in people? You know, but they belong to nature. That's the reason. Nature doesn't have waste. Nature just doesn't have teaching. So naturally, people who are nature-centric doesn't have the notion of teaching. You know? So once uh, I remember, Pawan, Pawan Gupta was telling uh, in Masuri. So he had gone to some villages and uh, many years ago, and they wanted him to teach the village children. So what the uh, people were telling him was that, can you learn our children? But they didn't have the word teaching. Understand? <laughs> so can you learn our children? <laughs> you see? <laughs> uh, so, you know, I, I, I think what I'm trying to say is that with the framework in the paradigm that you are in, you're not going to understand learning. It's a complete makeover, complete redoing that is required to truly understand what is learning. Because we have created so many categories to mislead. Understand? So it's actually a much deeper process. It is not an information exchanging process that is happening. You know? Understand? It's not an information idea that unless you begin to work on yourself, you know, continuously be aware of what you are, what you are, you know, your notions. Uh, uh, then you are not going to understand because we don't have the ability to see. What we are seeing is what the mind has created. You know, the categories that the mind has created, that is what we are seeing. Children don't play. But we assume they are playing. You know, everybody thinks they, they play is now the worst uh, damaging word that have been, they have created. There is no play. There is playfulness. You know, but we are mixing this. Because we need another category called learning, which is separate from playing. You see, now they're trying to mix it again, <laughs> but they're not understood it. You know, so what I'm trying to say is that uh, it's a journey that if you undertake, you know, then slowly, slowly you will, the, the child will reveal to you what it is, what its potential is, you know, provided you are willing to undo your own frames. Yeah? So this I'm just sharing with you the other part also. But this uh, workshop actually, we had about 60 children and uh, different activities they were doing. So some are using old magazines, some are doing color, you know, leaf, different, different activities. So I just thought, let me share this with you. Uh, You see, children learning from each other is a very different thing than when an adult sits and starts doing, you know. Children are innocently 
engaging with each other but that is not the relationship the moment an adult comes there that is why it is very dangerous these days that we are letting the adult play with children because adult play with a different mindset children doesn't have that problem no it is not that they are not careful na no? they really look for it you know like when they had decided something i i i have seen this girl really looking around for something you know i mean she knew what to do you know? so it's not that it is mindless also you know and then what is very interesting is that there is no notion of a rule in them all right they are very easily because they don't think that there are rules you know so they are, they are mixing now leaf and paper they are not breaking a rule by the way our notion is to break a rule which is again absurd <laughs> because we we think there are rules we need to break it <laughs> see there is no notion of a rule in a child you know i'm talking about man made rules you know Th- that doesn't exist so they are so easily able to you know playfully move around you know because see that i'm i'm pointing out this because we have created unwanted activist mode in these things you know we need to break a rule you know i mean that kind of thing <laughs> because i think you know to be very frank i feel that activism is doing more harm because activism is thinking that they are doing good you know i think hope schooling is dangerous equally <laughs> same thing with alternative schooling the other one you know it's like the case of a zoo at least the animal note is caged other one doesn't know they are caged simple <laughs> 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 you see that's what is happening so we create this notion that we are active is doing something we need to shift that mode completely because it is not this is all reactions but within the same framework you know <laughs> <laughs> so it's not easy i mean it's, i think you know life is giving us a different opportunity i think you know i think it's a much deeper spiritual process you know there is a story that i uh, I was in a conference few months ago, few days ago. So a story that occurred to me was this: that uh, I mean, the 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 story that is established is something else. But you know, I didn't remember that. So I made up a part of the story. It was this: that a little bird saw two-legged little bird saw this hundred feet, hundred feet, no, uh, centipede walking. So the bird was wondering, how does this guy walk with hundred feet? So he came, goes and asks him, "How do you know which leg to put?" You know. So the centipede waited for a minute and started looking at its feet and wondering which leg to put, and it lost its ability to walk. You see? <laughs> so this is what has happened to learning. Learning is the most natural process. It is a life's process. You know, every living being is learning. it's not a human activity we have been given some part of that that's all you know what a owl can see or what a bat can see or you know sense is very different from what we can do understand so within our senses there is a world that is available to us uh, but but we don't seems to be using it you know we don't seems to be doing what we are meant to do biologically you know
Uh, this I will talk about this later because I've been trying to work on something like this that how do you shift the focus from products into processes into inner abilities than outer abilities no we'll talk about that later this also drawing I have done a much deeper study on drawing this I will share with you later on the uh, actually we are only attempting to learn the world this is all what we are doing there is nothing called art Art again is a modern construct. Uh, again, so we will go into that. Uh, and, and I am telling this only by experiencing children. Alright. By documenting, uh, you know, so what I did was continuously document children. Observe them and document them. This is what I did. And I also stopped reading as I told you completely. Uh, which also shifted the way my process work. I don't do reasoning. I, I don't do thinking and imagining. I don't do all that. You know, I do thinking based on what I've, what I've experienced. I understand. Yeah? But for most educated people, this doing experience is absent. Thought is happening all the time. One book to another book to another book to another book. Understand? So it's in a complete in the realm of language and thought and mind. Understand? With no relevance to the ground, to experience. It's a mix of both also, right? Experience as well as what you learned. It's what you've learned in the past as well as what somebody else has experienced and documented. It's a cumulative experience that you can also get by reading something. No, you don't do that. I mean, this is all very good to, you know, talk about. So don't try to escape. Face the fact that we are idiots. Let's stay there, you know, don't worry about, you know, tomorrow, day after you can forget about it. But at least for three days, please uh, take it from me that we are all cognitively damaged people. You can deny it after three days. You can say you're the greatest guy and go away, no problem. <laughs> but if you want to truly understand a child, which doesn't belong to your paradigm, stop your, you know, illusions about knowledge and all that. Let's, you know, understand child from a slightly different, you know, or, or learning, basically learning from a different perspective altogether, you know. It's very interesting that that the child never thinks what they have drawn is wrong. Till you po will you keep the insisting that no no this is not the way. No, child never thinks like that. Very clearly a scratch will tell this is his mother or something like that. You know the child is very clear. You see, like this she has no doubt that that she has drawn there is this. You know that and this. If you look closely. That is absolute abstraction of this. The essence she is able to get. Understand? And it is age specific. At a certain age, like a crawling child, no? Very clearly age matters in that, no? <clears throat> so these activities were fully focused on observation. You know, we were not really, uh, it's a surprise for me that children are just able to do. But the focus was basically of the senses, of process, of observation. Uh, you know, uh, I mean, we use terms like underprivileged, correct, no? Now, that's a, that's a uh, you know, category that we have created for our convenience. <laughs> Understand? So, this is the frames that are being created for you to see through and treat them as underprivileged. No? They don't feel that at all. 
they are fine till you tell them no no you are poor no A- actually there is this interesting movie uh, this uh, helena norberg who who was in ladakh you know she is an anthropologist and linguist i think uh, who did the movie uh, and the book first called ancient futures ancient futures very interesting uh, uh, study on when she went to that ladakhi community nobody ever felt they are poor they had no idea <laughs> you know then as she begin to go there you know as development began to take place slowly slowly they started owning up oh they are poor <laughs> So this impoverishment is a political activity. It's not, you know, purposely designed. You see, it's a psychological activity actually. You know, so you feel inferior. Like education, exactly the same thing that we do with education. So what do you have to say about uh, now? They have this term of special children. What yeah. Have you have to say about that? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Actually, you know, I mean, the West is churning out so many new terminologies. You know, there is something called uh, disobedient child or something. There are so many. You know, uh, Thanks. Thanks. yeah, so many, so many. Actually, you know, you, if the child doesn't obey the mother, then that's a d- disease of the child. You know, so it's termed that. There is something, no? Obedient, what? It's called. Mm. No, that's a different thing. There is a new uh, uh, thing w- which is about disobeying. Child doesn't obey, then that's a that is treated as a, you know, problem, a disease. Yeah. So this was a very very interesting event. Uh, I couldn't believe that some somebody could, you know, this such beautiful things can be drawn. So uh, I I started telling it's so beautiful and I repeated that and she stopped drawing after that <laughs> Actually this is another extremely interesting you know shift that I found in a rural kind of situation a child will never come back asking for parents approval everything is done for them not for exhibiting the shift we have made that every stupid activity they do they have to say very good yeah. if they don't do very good then it's a problem yeah. you know so you are conditioning the child to actually be stupid you know i i feel the very act of teaching is because you consider them as stupid no you know it's a it's a unwritten idea that unless you consider them as idiots you can't do teaching you know as much as i tell you <laughs> no actually it is far more a deeper existential crisis which is that a biological being is learning all the time it's his nature then you are telling them no no you go and learn from there you know so there's a confusion about its own creation of knowledge which the being is doing you know each cell is doing that no but the mind is being told no 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 education means they somebody will teach you that is what where knowledge is you know so there is a much more unsaid deeper crisis that you know and then we end up becoming victims absolutely see, see you, you see this whole ecological disaster that we are creating is because of a damaged mind understand so but we are again and again trying to repair the outer world we are not addressing that this is an inner problem what we have done inside we are only repeating outside it's a denial of biology actually it's the de- denial of a uh, fundamental part of our life that we do by going through education by reading by thinking you know it's a denial of the whole system
so this was interesting that uh, uh, they on their own started using laterite stones and digging different different color from that you know laterite stones that you find here no ah uh, so much of color all this color is taken from the laterite no so just taking color from stones and so that's what i meant that this is completely a free flowing exploration and then one day i saw them using that on to paper you know and that 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 went on to another kind of activity so it's a it's a so when you leave that space open it's a continuous process that children uh, are you know doing you know so this was a 100% no instruction activity huh? except of course organizing that uh, you know materials this like what we did today you know understand so it's interesting how they began to explore different types of materials that can they can use you know people who are familiar with coconut uh, on that uh, what you call that thing on that leaf on the side there is this dust that, that that you know that you can scrape out this is that you know and and, and that white color is rock uh, ash you know so it is so interesting that children were you know all around trying to you know <clears throat> yeah ah uh, this is the laterite <laughs> so they transferred that onto paper you know initially it was just geometric things that went on to paper and then they started doing the scenery kind of things you know so we were also doing working in clay one group was handling clay again recreating the village this is an interesting thing this is not done in a potters community this particular activity it's interesting to see how a potter's child would handle clay and a non potter child would handle that na uh, that that ladder that you see a potter's child will have a notion that it has to be fired <laughs> so they would never use a stick there you know you can see that another very interesting uh, aspect is that children always like to work together mm -hmm. you know huh social social yeah they always like to work in groups you know few people together mm -hmm. exactly opposite of what we do in schools na no? so you can see the quality in that you know that the uh, that you can see the effort that the bull is putting you know? So I kept on introducing small, small activities, you know, 
and again here what another very interesting thing is that uh the gender division had not taken place you know so boys also would do stitching there, there's no such notion that it is only for girls actually this is a very modern construct this whole idea of gender and it is also because of the uh the denial of the body denial of the uh the biology in us you know this whole so what i feel is that within the context of modernity there are only there is only male principle at work masculine principle at work you know which also means that there is bound to be denial of the of the feminine so it's not just the feminine there the feminine in me has been denied you know so uh, within this context it is bound to happen like this only there is no other change that is possible because again it's an internal issue unless we begin to work as an integration of our inner being externally nothing can happen no so this is a very interesting activity again here also no teaching uh they were doing just simple line stitch you know but this anybody can do nobody needs a training for that you know just line stitch and within that they are exploring you know what kind of how do you chain the lines for example in this you know she has just stretched the whole thing one line you know so this uh, exploration is it's very innate in us hmm? actually if you remove the category called art no everything is fine <laughs> you, you should move into understanding beauty beauty is not art every activity is bound to be beautiful you know it could be a barber doing or a chapati making every activity it's only when we create a category called art then we create a different problem in that society you know this is very other very interesting uh, activity that we had undertaken looking at the negative spaces you know and, and also what i would like to say is that it's not something that we were we started doing it right from day one all this you know so there was a continuous growth that was happening you know few activities happened and it went on for a few years 5 6 years this went on you know so something that i have been looking at that would be introduced you know like an activity like this of course i introduced it you know but then you begin to see begin to see magic happening here because see look at the way that this child has handled this portion just look at this so beautiful you know and this requires real uh, intelligence no and look at the care that has to go into this because this is not it can't be just done so all this activity are meditative activities you know you have to pay attention look at this look at the tendrils here you know look at this how she is how they have treated that so there is a continuous challenge that they put to themselves you know to do something complex mm -hmm. 